so that may have been kind of hard to, to, to perceive in our uh, heads without seeing an example. So let's see an example of that using five gates. So we're given um, a five gate example. There are four pads scattered around uh, and they have some sort of a constant position. And then we have one, two, three, uh, wait, wait a second, one, two, three, four, five gates. You see, I numbered them one, two, three, four, and five. And then we have different weight waiting. Um, Waiting, uh, weights around here, these blue things. So um, if we kind of guess what we expect, we have this large weight here, this 10, and a large weight here. So I imagine that this pad is gonna pull gates number one and three really tightly over uh, close to it. The rest are gonna be kind of scattered around a, a bit more evenly towards the different anchor points we have in the example. But let's do this. Uh, it's really hard to actually guess what the placement is gonna be here. So let's try to do our analytic placement. So first we build our connectivity matrix. So for our connectivity matrix, remember what we do is we take our matrix and in position one, two, and two, one, we put the weight between gate one and gate two, which will be a one. In uh, position in uh, one, three, and three, one, we're also we're gonna have with the weight ten. In position three, four, and four, three, we're gonna have the weight one. In position um, two, four, we're gonna have the weight one, and four, two, we're gonna have the weight one. Four, five, and uh, two, five. Okay, so that builds our connectivity matrix. So let's just take an example. We have uh, position one, three, or three, one, sorry, and one, three. Um, there are 10 and we look between gates 1 and 3 there are 10 that's what we said and the diagonal is going to be all zeros so that's our connectivity matrix now remember the way to take our uh, connectivity matrix and make up our a matrix is to take all of these numbers and just add a minus to them so that's going to be everything off diagonal and then we just have the question of how to figure out the diagonals of this connectivity matrix and what we said is we're going to sum up the row so the sum of this is 10 plus 1, that's 11. And then look um, for uh, gate number 1, because this is row 1, we're going to see what kind of connections it has to pads. And we see that there's a connection here um, that, is, uh, that is worth 10. So we're going to add 10 to that. So we're going to get 21 in the first position of the diagonal. And you can see that here, we get 21. Let's do the second row. So we sum up row 2, and we have 4 over here and we look at gate two and gate two has no connections to any of the pads so therefore plus zero so we just get a four over here again uh, take the example of gate of gate three so gate three we have ten one one that's twelve plus three connects over here to the pad uh, uh, along here which with one so we get twelve plus one that's thirteen etc etc we'll get the whole um, a matrix. So now that we have the A matrix, we want to uh, figure out what the B matrix, the B vectors are. And as we said for the B vectors, for ve uh, for B X in the position one uh, and B Y in the position one, we're going to take gate one and check um, what the connections are to uh, pads. And we see that there's a connection to this pad over here. The coordinates of this pad are zero and one. So we're going to take the weight ten multiply it by zero, that's what's gonna be in the x vector, so we're gonna have zero in the x vector. For the y, we're gonna multiply it by one, so we're gonna have 10 in the y uh, vector. So for uh, b, x in the position um, one, we're gonna have zero, and b, y in the position one, we're gonna have 10, okay? Um, similarly, for the second gate, what we have is no connections, so therefore um, b, x, in position two is going to be zero, and b y in the position two is going to be zero. For the third gate, we have this connection here, which is one, and so we're going to have one times one is one, and one times zero is zero, so we're going to have one and zero. Um, for the fourth gate, for example, um, we have one times one is one, and one times one is one, we're going to have one, one, etc. So we're going to build our vectors. Let's see, just for the, the last, um, the fifth position. Right, so five times 0.5, uh, uh, five, uh, I mean, one times 0.5 is 0.5, and one times zero is zero, and we get the fifth position in the B vector. So we were able to easily build that, and now all we have to do is solve this linear, um, linear system, and we get a placement of our uh, uh, final placement, which shows that as we guessed, uh, gate number one and gate number three are going to be pulled tightly over to the pad over here in the corner, and the rest are going to kind of be scattered by being pulled 
to uh, the other uh, pads, but uh, they're pulled a lot less strongly because of these uh, this 1 versus 10 weighting factor. Okay, so we saw an example of uh, analytical placing, and we said that this is going to give us an optimal solution to our problem, which should solve all the problems in life. However, as we said, there are two places that we kind of uh, put some uh, non-idealities in. One was the, the basic cost metric of this quadratic placement, uh, quadratic wire length. Is that correct? Um, and we don't have a clear answer to that, but maybe it's good enough. And the second one was the weighting factor that we put on all of our um, clique model. Okay, so uh, that's not the only problem. The biggest problem probably is what we call gate clustering. So when we take a quadratic placement and see what it looks like, um, we see something usually like this. So um, here's a, an example that Rob Rutenbarg gave, and you see that um, what happened when we applied quadratic placement everything wanted to be in the middle and that is probably not good we would expect uh, that we want to pretty much have a good utilization of our floor plan and scatter things around and that that that's probably not exactly what we wanted and it came out of the fact that our um, we had no um, actual uh, uh, incentive to, to put things each in their own place and everything was uh, just a point in the, in, the, in, the, in the design space. Okay, uh, this gets even worse when we start having macros scattered around. So we have all kinds of SRAMs and different types of macros scattered around our floor plan. And now um, look how uh, this example of 211,000 gates with 500 or more hard macros that IBM gave. And you see uh, it just wants to put all the gates on top of the macros and it has no... Um, and then no knowledge of uh, this blockage type of stuff being there. So this is really a problem, and how do we solve it? Well, the way we do it with everything in uh, the EDA world, it seems like, is we use recursion. And this time we'll use what we call recursive partitioning, where our goal is actually to take uh, our solution here and scatter all the gates so they give us a good solution, but they use utilize the entire area. Okay? So if we start with our first quadratic placement where we have this scattering, what we're going to do is we're going to cut our um, solution in two and then um, send all the uh, ones that fell here on the left to the left side, send all the ones here on the right side, and we create two new problems. We have this floor plan and this floor plan. Okay, we're going to solve that. We again get this clustering in the middle, but what are we going to do? We're going to cut this type of a floor plan in two and um, we're going to get, uh, again, uh, four different solutions here that we can see. They're again going to be clustered. So what do we do? We keep on partitioning them, keep on getting smaller and smaller problems until we have small enough problems that we can do some sort of a um, solution on a, on a much smaller uh, basis. Okay, what this essentially did is it scattered all of our gates. So we see that the gates now are scattered all around our floor plan, utilizing it much better than in the situation over here where everything was stuck right in the middle on top of each other. So let's uh, uh, describe this recursive partitioning more formally. We're going to start with a stage called partitioning. We're going to divide our current solution into two. It can either be vertically or horizontally, depending on what our previous solution was. So we're going to divide it in half. After we divide it in half, we're going to assign gates into the, into the new smaller regions. So how we're going to assign gates is we're going to take the, um, the other axis. So we cut here vertically. We're going to take the horizontal axis, and we're going to sort all the gates according to the axis. And we're going to say, okay, this guy's the first one, this guy's the second one, third one, fourth one, etc. until we get to half. We're going to say that half of the gates we're going to assign to the left side. So we took and we sorted, and we found that all of these gates, these were the um, most left placed gates. We're going to say, okay, you guys should be inside this left partition, and you guys, even though you may have fell in our solution, actually on the left side, we're going to throw you over into the right partition. So you have to, um, we're going to assign you over here, and then you will have to be inside this side. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to sort it and assign the gates to each of these partitions. Then we have to do what we call containment. We have to formulate a new quadratic placement uh, matrix that actually keeps the gates in the new region. 
how are we going to do that? That's kind of tricky. How are we going to make sure that this gate that wanted to be over here on the left side will fi find itself on the right side in the end? And the way to do that is what we call pseudo pads. I mean, it solves a, a different problem as well. We have connectivity between these two pads. And now in our new solution, this, this guy's in this side and this guy's in this side. What do we do with this uh, connection, which should affect our placement? So what we're going to do is we're going to create these pseudo pads. We're going to take this guy. We're going to say he wanted to be over here at this uh, Y um, coordinate. So we're going to put him on the barrier over here as a pad that cannot be moved and solve uh, the solution for this. Uh, accordingly, we're going to take this guy, move him over here, put him here. And on this solution, we're going to assume that he was over there. Those are called pseudo pads. They're not really there, but they show that um, uh, there is still this connectivity and the weight, the weighting factor between the pads uh, still exists and still uh, affects the solution. But it also makes sure that uh, this guy stays on this side and these guys stay on this side because they have a connection to a, a pad which is on the boundary. There's nothing in negative territory or whatever it could be called. Um, Again, this is another kind of a non-ideality of the solution because pseudo pads are not exactly the real connectivity that we would we should be taking into consideration between them, but they're pretty close. So let's take an example of how to do recursive partitioning. Okay, so we start with an initial net list. We have five gates. We numbered them one, two, three, four, and five. We have nine wires that connect between the gates. They all have weights. And we have these three pads that are called A, B, and C. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a quadratic placement and we get this nice placement, but it's clustered and it's not good enough. So what we have to do now is we have to cut the um, floor plan in half with this blue line over here. And now um, we have to sort on the x axis. So we see that one, five and four are the most left uh, pointing guys, uh, the, the ones that are uh, placed on the most left hand side of the partition and three and two are uh, the most right hand side. So we're going to actually go and say that um, uh, we have to make three and two um, appear in in the solution to this matrix while we can solve our quadratic placement for this guy. But as we see, we have a kind of a problem because four is connected to three, um, five is connected to two, one is connected to two, and in our next solution, um, three and two are not gonna be part of the solution. So what do we do? We um, make our new, we make these pseudo pads. So three was over here in our initial solution. We make a pseudo pad at the same uh, y axis, but on the x boundary, and two was over here. We make a pseudo pad that is on the same uh, y positioning of two, but on the, uh, bound the new boundary. Okay, now we can solve um, this left hand side and we get this nice uh, quadratic uh, placement uh, solution with these pseudo pads. The pseudo pads we can now uh, erase, but we, we know that in the end we'll have this connection between five and two and between four and three. Okay, now we take, um, uh, we basically have our uh, solution and we can go over to the other side. So on the other side, again, we have two and three that they, we have to contain them over here while um, they have connections to one, five, and four. So we will again propagate these guys over to the boundary and create pseudo pads that two and three are connected to. Um, uh, and this is the input to the third quadratic placement. And now we can solve it and we get the placement of two and three. And we can uh, continue doing this until we have small enough areas that we've scattered the cells enough and we can make a local solution. So we keep on recursive partitioning until we have something like 10 to 100 gates. That's kind of a, a number that we can say that uh, we can deal with. And now we have um, these placements that are not legal because we have overlaps. And again, we have uh, things that are not sitting in the exact rows and so forth. So how do we solve it? We have to, uh, we have to do um, some sort of a legalization step. Um, to uh, actually move our gates that are not points, They're, they actually have sizes according to our left files. We have to move them into rows so they're legal. How do we do legalization? We can do it with simulated annealing, for example. We can just use a real low temperature so the gates won't jump around too far. Um, but finally, they'll get to a, uh, a legal position. Or we can do other types of things. So that was how we do analytic placement, and that's how um, basically our placers work today.